A very good evening to you who is watching us. We welcome you to the Family Hour. This is the Monday edition of the Family Hour. And Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. And today we are discussing education and career. Now, uh, we all know that... Uh, the Ministry of Education and Sports, together with the National Curriculum Development Center, launched and uh, launched a new lower secondary school curriculum that is in 2020. And there are still very many questions up to date that are unanswered. Now, today, by the end of this show, I believe very many of your questions will be answered. Just to remind you that uh, 13th August is uh, the official provincial uh, church of Uganda media day now you can be part of this day by one praying for us as church of Uganda family TV and you can as well encourage others to watch us as you also watch us but we also need your financial support now you can support us through uh, MTN mobile money or Airtel mobile money and our merchant codes are always on our screen uh, but you can as well do a bank transaction in either Centena, Standbic Bank or Equity Bank now today we are discussing the uh, lower secondary school curriculum and we want to look at its impact especially when it comes to the uganda's education system for a very long time we've been singing a song of the, the nature of education which tra which is more theoretical and less practical does it mean that this lower secondary school curriculum is the answer join me as we welcome with us uh, mr mulumba mutema mathias who is a curriculum specialist from uh the national curriculum development center mr mulumba you're most welcome this evening thank you Adrian. we are delighted to have you today and uh, kindly greet our viewers who are watching you good evening viewers thank you family tv I'm um, excited to be here on behalf of the National Cultural Development Center and the Ministry of Education and Sports. Uh, we are here to share with you about the new lower secondary cultural. Okay. Uh, we understand that uh, in uh, February 2022, this curriculum was rolled out in a phased approach, uh, starting with Senior 1 then. Uh, and I believe that class is now in Senior 3, if I'm not mistaken. And... Uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, hope, uh, anticipations about this curriculum, but we can also we cannot rule out the fact that it also caused a lot of confusion in the parents, in the teachers themselves, uh, and the various stakeholders. Uh, up to now, very many people don't know what to do exactly. But we are glad that we have you, and you are going to at least. Uh, shed a leaf on some of these uh, issues. But just to begin with, Mr. Mulumba, tell us a, a brief about this curriculum. What is it? How is it packaged? And uh, as we go on along with this discussion. Thank you, Adrian. Mm. Uh, viewers and the, the Family TV, we want to thank you for this opportunity that NCDC is here and I'm here on behalf of all the staff and the ministry. Mm -hmm. The new lower secondary curriculum, I want to make it clear, was rolled out in 2020, February 17th. Mm. And sooner than later that we had moved, by March 18th, COVID came <laughs> in. And all of us, we had to go home. Sure. Uh, so in 2022, when the schools resumed, the learners came back to school mm -hmm. in all classes and National Curriculum Development put up an abridged curriculum for all schools that had, all learners that had not continued with learning in 2020. Mm -hmm. So that abridged curriculum moved the whole of 2022 and it's still moving in other classes. Going back to the new lower secondary curriculum, mm -hmm. The new lower secondary curriculum came into existence and it was declared by Mama Janet, our Minister of Education and Sports, in 2020 
in February 17th. Mm -hmm. Learners began. This was the biggest change this country has experienced since 1918. The well, old What makes you think, it, or what makes you believe that it is the biggest change? Yes, because the old curriculum mm. was written in London in 1918, and okay. we have been running it for the last 100 years plus. Okay. The only changes that have been coming was to add more content, mm. to add more subjects. But this was a change, and we were changing from 43 subjects on the menu mm. to 20. At first, as curriculum designers, we had thought to have only eight learning areas. Mm. But curriculum is a stakeholder's process. When we interacted with stakeholders, they advised us that go slowly. You cannot move from 43 to 8. <laughs> so we came to 8 to 20 subjects. Mm. And these subjects were packaged in a design we call competence-based design. Mm. And competence-based, uh, if my pronunciation is clear, mm. it ends with letter Y. Mm. What does that mean? What can you do after interacting with the teachers, your fellow learners, and the environment? Mm. It is a big change from the old curriculum, which was teacher-centered. Mm. The teacher knew it all mm. and had to deliver the facts. And for you, your duty was to record the facts and reproduce them. As the teacher presented, As the teacher to presented you. them. <laughs> right now, mm. the learners who are in senior three, mm. they are under a curriculum design which demands that when you see that learn ask the learn what can you do for us after interacting with the teacher mm -hmm. this new curriculum is also having a dimension of constructivism that means that when we interact with others we create our own knowledge mm -hmm. like right now by the time i leave the tv Many of you will be creating new knowledge as you interact with us. Mm. Edwin here will also be creating new knowledge mm. from the question he is producing. Yeah. He will not be the same True. after this interaction. True. So the new curriculum, that is its approach. Mm. It also has another dimension which we call pedagogy of integration. Mm. Here is that the, what the learner knows and what the teacher knows are put together to form a new meaning. So we integrate what the teacher knows with what the learners have in their backpack or their experience. Because the learners do not come with an empty slate, mm -hmm. as one of the educators put it in France. Some years back in France, there was an educator called Rousseau. He told us that we, we are born with an empty slate. That is not true. Mm -hmm. People come with some backpack, some knowledge, some experience, and some exposure when they come to school. So that exposure is integrated with what the teacher is delivering. And then new meanings, new experiences are developed. Okay. So that new curriculum is learner-centered. Mm. And being learner-centered means the learners take learning by themselves. Mm. So we have designed materials. We started with a curriculum framework, mm. which I want to share with. This is the curriculum framework. Mm. And the curriculum framework mm. has four main things. Mm. One, what are we to learn? Or what mm. do you learn? Mm. These are the subjects and the concepts. Mm. We have now 21 subjects on the menu. We, the 21st subject is general science mm -hmm. for learners with special learning needs. Mm. Instead of them doing physics, chemistry, biology, mm. the learners with special learning needs are taking general science. So it is okay. also on the menu. Okay. Then we have the other subjects, mm. uh, English, language, mm. mathematics, mm. history and political education, mm. geography, mm. physics, mm. chemistry, mm. biology, mm. chiswahili. Physical education, entrepreneurship, and religious education. Those are comparisary from senior one to senior two. Okay. Then we have electives or options. Mm. These include agriculture. They include fine art and design, 
technology and design, food and nutrition, food and nutrition. Then we have literature in English. We have in information and communication technology, ICT. We have local languages. And here, the local languages include Luganda, mm. but we have other nine that have orthography, they have books, mm. they have materials to use. So 10 of them are ready, and we are encouraging other languages, like the Iki are writing their own orthography right yeah. now. <laughs> they are very, very busy, and the other languages, you can come on board, okay. so long as you get the materials, the orthography right, mm. and the teachers are in place, we shall continue teaching you all local language okay. then we have foreign languages mm. these include right now french mm. german arabic uh, then we have chinese mm. has come on board because there are two thousand million chinese on earth mm. and it is a big market if yeah. we have to sell our things there mm. to be able to sell to them we need to have a way we communicate with them exactly. so we need ugandanis and if we take their our coffee because that is a very big market. Mm. And if we take the, our coffee, we need the Ugandans who can tell them about the beauty of our coffee mm. in the morning. When they are drinking it at any time. The Ugandans, if they know the, fre the Chinese, they will be able to do it perfectly well. Mm. So those are the subjects in short. Okay. Okay. And then we also design that learning starts at 8 a.m. and the teachers stop interacting with the learners directly in the class at mm. 2.55. Then from 3 p.m. Mm. up to 5, learners go into other activities. I just want to highlight those activities such that yes. people uh, become aware. Because uh, some parents, I believe, yeah. maybe when they are passing by a school and they find the, children. the children at around three are loitering, then they start pinning the schools. Yeah. You're not teaching. Yeah. Our children are just playing. playing. <laughs> because we want to produce a holistic person, mm. then we have other activities that occur between 3 mm. p.m. Mm. to 5 p.m. when the school closes. Okay. We, we have five key activities. Mm. One is library and the internet use, mm. where we expect learners to go and get more knowledge about what they have been learning, mm. and also do their own research, do personal reading, do leisure reading. Like uh, it, was, it is put in place to bring to us those who were taught early on. Mm. We had this library time where you were expected to read a hundred novels by senior two. Ah. Yeah, that was the expectation. And UNESCO has it that you must read at least 50 novels by the end of year nine. Mm. You must have read 50 novels. Personally, I read over a hundred of them. Wow. And I know many of them. <laughs> then we have project and project-based learning. Mm. Here, we would like the learners to apply what they have learned from class mm. to solve societal problems and the project and project-based learning uses a driving question a challenging question and engaging question that is posed to the learner by the teacher and then the learner find solutions mm. to such a challenging question okay. and they produce products and services which they can exhibit mm. to the parents mm. to see how they are applying what they have learned to uh. solve societal problems. Uh. Then we have debate, where we would like the learners to share their knowledge, to discuss, make arguments about a given topics. We have another activity where learners, on another day, they can do clubs and associations, uh. like we used to have scripture union, uh. a farmers club in agriculture, uh. Wildlife Club, Rotary Club, mm. those have a special time between three and five or during one week mm. when the learners can interact in clubs. Mm. Then finally, a healthy body is a healthy mind. Yeah. On a Friday, we expect all learners between three to five, mm. depending on the, how they, they have the facilities, because facilities may be a challenge. Yeah. And in one school, it can be on Friday, or in one class can be on Friday, such that we are able to use that field, all of us. But 
one of the afternoon between three and five, there should be sports and games. Mm. And these games can be done in any space available, so long as the teacher and the learners are able to engage. Okay. In health, to make their body healthy yeah. by doing body conditioning, by doing some sports and yeah. games yeah. at school. Okay. Because sitting from morning to sunset <laughs> may make them sick or they can get your best. Sure. So the program mm. is trying to say, get the academic, mm. also get this component which make you holistic mm. in outlook. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, we look at all this and uh, I could say, maybe the students uh, were not complaining about the curriculum that nurtured us. Why? Of course, some um, were able to, through it, uh, uh, make, make it, uh, though some others uh, built onto the saying that uh, the, the curriculum was more theoretic uh, than practical. So, uh, what prompted NCDC and uh, and the Ministry of Education to really come up with this reform and how much did it take you uh, but also uh, in piloting did you really uh, realize or did you uh, did you ascertain that all these will be practical to all the parts of Uganda thank you so much mm. uh, you are right mm. what prompted us yes. why did we change mm. There are several reasons. The first one I've already mentioned to you mm. that we are teaching an out to the curriculum of mm -hmm. 1918. <laughs> <laughs> then mm. the content we are teaching also is outdated. For instance, okay. mm. I was taught in geography that there is Congwa irrigation scheme in Tanzania where grandness grow. When you go there today, it is nowhere. <laughs> you go to Gezira Cotton Irrigation Scheme in Sudan. Mm. It is no longer there. Mm. So some of the content that we are teaching today is history of that subject. Mm. Mm. In physics, many of the learners are taught that uh, we have diodes. Mm. But the diodes are no longer there today. I also studied them in diodes. physics. Yes. The children are also taught that there are three states of matter in Abbott. Mm. The book was written in 1945. <laughs> and now you are teaching the learners today who can go on Google mm. and find how many states of matter. When you type in, in 205, 209, mm. there were already seven states of matter up to today. Mm. In 205, there were five states of matter. Mm. So are we teaching... Science or history of science? <laughs> when you look science, at the biology, mm. they, there is a topic flowering plants. Mm. This topic of flowers here. Yes. In McKean, Introduction to Biology by McKean, mm. or New Tropical Biology by Cousins, mm. there are eight pages talking about the flower. The current book by Esther Mada, this one, it mm. has only two pages because... Okay. This content here is activity based. The learners mm. have to do an activity. The other one was spoon feeding you and they you are give not you engaged. On everything. Thing. And then all you do is to, to here, perform whatever they've given. There are two activities. When you do them, you get all the other eight. Mm. So this one makes you to own the learning. Okay. By giving you an activity. So when the parents visit the school, mm. they will find the learners have mm. been put in groups. Yeah. This has many benefits. Mm. It helps the learner to acquire the 21st century skills, the worker readiness skills, because mm. right now, if I shared with you, this morning I was with my family. It was a group. Mm. Then I, w I came to town, I interacted with another set of people. Mm. Then in the evening, I was in uh, the ministry headquarters. I interacted with different people. Mm. Right now, I'm here. I've, I'm interacting with different people. But before yeah. even reaching here, mm. I found their scaries are down there at the <laughs> gate. I had to interact with them. They were mm. the bosses. They said, bring your identity card. Mm. And, uh, and whoever was not bringing their, their identity cards, they were not allowing them. So they became bosses. Mm. So you must be effective in all these different groups. So we are trying to see, using the subject, mm. using the lesson, how can we... In integrate also the required skills at the place of work. Okay. So this new curriculum prepares learners for further studies and the world of work. Oh. 
So it is both trying to see that we achieve both at a go. The other curriculum um, where the learners come and listen the teacher from morning to sunset <laughs> was not preparing us to be work ready. Mm -hmm. Because at work, you have to make a report, you have yeah. to communicate, mm -hmm. you have to present. Mm -hmm. right, right now, I'm, I was trained as an agriculture teacher, mm -hmm. but now I'm communicating, mm -hmm. I'm in articulating ideas about the curriculum. True. They are not about agriculture, which was I, I was taught. Mm -hmm. So learners should be given an opportunity mm -hmm. in learning to come in front of their friends mm -hmm and they present. Mm. Another reason was that the subject language was too abstract for people who are using English as a second or third language. Mm. For instance, a learner in a primary can find the word photosynthesis. Yes. It has very many syllables. Yet at age 9, age 10, is supposed only to know three syllables. Eh. <laughs> So it is too <laughs> abstract for the learner mm. to, to understand the term photosynthesis. Volcanistic, for instance, mm. it is another very complex, complicated word, but it is in the primary six syllabus. Monocotolidon. Monocotolidon <laughs> in senior one and two. At <laughs> the age what? of 12, you need to know only a maximum of four syllables. Mm. Then in senior four, you, are need, you need to know at least five syllables. Mm. So, that one alone was making many learners to be disadvantaged. Mm. So we wanted to customize, make the language more simpler, and also by allowing the learner to come with their experience and integrating it in what the teacher is teaching as a concept, mm. it could make learning more beneficial to all of us. Okay. Then the other thing, the, all the curriculum was not addressing our social and economic needs. For instance, it takes seven years for about 60% of the graduates to find a job yeah. of what they studied. True. Right now, when you go to your National Planning Authority, mm. you will find that 41% of people who are supposed to be employed, even they have given up, they cannot even look for a job. Because their skill, the skills they have do not m meet the needs of the labor market. So they, they, we were taught things which are so detached from what is required. So our social and economic needs were not being addressed. So we are trying to say, by engaging the learner in project and project-based learning, they will be looking at the societal problems and how they can solve them. What does the society want? Because if they make a product or a service and present it to the society and says, no, says, no that's not what we want, mm. then the learners will go and rethink mm. a new model such that when they come out, they are able to solve a societal problem. Okay. Then the other one mm. was the cost. The cost of teaching somebody at secondary school is seven times what is supposed to be. Currently or Currently. Before. Okay. What you paid in school mm. is seven times what you are supposed to pay. Mm. It is very costly. For instance... Actually, uh, at that very point, <laughs> let us take a short commercial <laughs> break and when we return, we are going to start from there and analyze that. We shall see how authentic that is. Stick with us.
from that commercial break and we are grateful that you are still watching church of uganda family tv and this is the family hour the family hour is on every monday to friday so you don't need to miss any of our segmented series of this show monday edition is always career and education so tuesday is always health we talk health and Wednesday finances and wealth now Thursday is leadership and governance and most importantly a Friday edition with Claire Buenje where we talk about parenting all to do with parenting because at the end of the day we need to, 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 to groom this wholesome child when they go to school and interact with this new curriculum that the NCDC has prepared for them, then we shall have a very, very, very enriched future. We are talking about the new secondary school curriculum. And before the break, there was something that was almost shaking tables in this studio, that uh, someone in secondary pays seven times than what they would have paid. Now, does it mean that uh, some of us should go back and ask for the balance? <laughs> if Where you, we cheated? If, if you were cheated. <laughs> Personal I was cheated. Okay. For instance, I studied 18 subjects in senior one and two. Okay. But those that appear on my past lips are only 10. So yes, yes. Where, where do you recognize what I studied in senior one and two? Mm. The teacher was paid for that. But where is it recorded? For me, I, my parents bought books, bought pens. Mm. I ate food to listen to this teacher. <laughs> and I had to spend sleepless <laughs> nights revising for that. Mm. So that value is nowhere. Mm. It is a wasted value because... Mm. The subjects are too many okay. being taught. Okay. That increases the cost. Mm. When it comes to senior three and four, subjects become electives. Mm. Some subjects have only 15 learners, and the teacher is paid for 15 learners. Mm. While you find that these learners, in the comparison the subjects, mm. there are so many learners, mm. but the teacher is now handling 100 learners, the other one is handling 15. Mm. Is, is that a good use of manpower? Mm. <laughs> it is a wasteful use of manpower. Sure, sure. So you find all of this, you had to make classes for these small numbers. When I was in Kalinabiri, because it was just beginning, mm. I was teaching under the tree my four students of agriculture mm. during the in senior three and four. So we had to carry the tables out every lesson. That is all a waste. Time is wasted. When it rains, you don't study. <laughs> the teacher is paid to teach only four. Uh, all of that. You've reminded me of uh, our literature class yeah. at a level. A level. <laughs> <laughs> I salute Mr. Kasozi Godfrey, yeah. our teacher. Yeah. He used to struggle with us. We are only three. Yeah. And he used to improvise. Sometimes you're in the tree, the other time you're on in, the veranda. In the... <laughs> so if we have to rationalize mm. this, then we had to reduce the number of subjects. And that's why we had at first thought that we should have only eight learning areas, but the stakeholders told us, mm. go slow, okay. let us move with the trend. So is there hope that uh, as we move on, there will be eight? True, because as we move forward, mm. we have realized, like you were taught weathering yes. in agriculture, yes. there is weathering, in biology, yes. there is weathering, in geography, in geography there is weathering. Mm. And now also we are learning that also in chemistry there is weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is the same content going to the same head, but being delivered in different, in different forms in mm -hmm. different subjects. Mm -hmm. So in the new thinking, mm -hmm. we have constructs. Ideas that appear to be the same should be taught once, mm -hmm. such that you don't duplicate. Okay. Because you type about weathering mm -hmm. or soil in biology. Mm -hmm. You type about soil in geography. You type out another book of soil agriculture in with agriculture. soil. This book should be merged into one. Mm. Or this content should be put in one area. Okay. Uh, the rocks, it is the same thing. Mm. You go to entrepreneurship. Mm. They are thinking about a balance sheet in entrepreneurship. In e commerce. commerce. Then you go to agriculture, mm. there, there is also agriculture economics. economics, there yeah. is a balance sheet. So you are teaching the <laughs> that, same thing. That was my hardest, hardest section in that paper. <laughs> three times, 
to the same learner, you are wasting time mm. and over burdening the head. Mm. So the learner get a lot of content in the noise head. And this content, they cannot even use it. Mm. They can't use it. For instance, when I asked, you go on the street there, to tell somebody to direct a person from Chihi, where to find family studio, you will get surprised. True. Because many people, when you interact with them on the street, mm. and tell them, tell somebody from Kabong how he could reach family TV. He will not mention the time you will use. Mm. He will not mention how much money you will use. Mm. He will not mention the direction. Yeah. Is it the north? But from primary four, they study about the campus. Yes. They study about distance. Mm. Even they make calculation of converting Bearing meters, <laughs> meters into yeah. centimeters or kilometers. Mm. But when it comes to how to use it, none of them use. When you go outside this country and you find somebody asking you a place, I was in recently in the Netherlands mm. and in Malawi. Then people are asking, where is this place? Then you know it's a Uganda. Just start speaking, <laughs> speaking in Uganda. <laughs> Just speak, speak this. Because we don't apply what we have learned. Mm. So many things are there. We just gather them and we get what I call balloon success. Mm. Somebody gets a D1, but when you put him to task, the D1 does not come up. The D1 could be pr probably they studied about the Canadian prairies, <laughs> and that was the number you named said. <laughs> and it passed. <laughs> okay, we we'll so look at Baruni success. <laughs> we are looking at the applicability of all this because I realize this is very good, and uh, I, I'm, I'm grateful that at least uh, our children will get an opportunity that we didn't get. Yes, yeah, some of us, the old, uh, the old curriculum nurtured us, but we cannot also take away the fact that this is very good and the fact that it is learner-centered. The teacher is not a deputy god in knowledge. No. So a learner also has a contribution to make, which is more practical. But I look at uh, our settings uh, as a country and the nature of our schools. I realize it calls for more, one, uh, facilities because you talked about the internet and uh, the truth is we have places in Uganda that are so remote that even the internet connectivity is very very poor how are these going to benefit in this and then you also talked about the library you also uh, you talked about very many other things uh, which might not be applicable to very many schools uh, in Uganda uh, was this curriculum really prepared for first class schools um, middle class schools or you had in mind uh, something to do with the other third class schools third world schools thank you for that question mm. developing a curriculum mm. as i told you earlier on is a stakeholders process yes. and we did mm. i remember we went to serwanga Rwanga in skalangara mm. personally i went to guru army school mm. in the north mm. we did also Interaction with Gaya's High School, which is which you can call mm, now that is the, a first um, class, first class yeah, school. That is first class. Then we went to Vumba Secondary School in Chiboga. Mm. We had in Sanji here. We did pilot, mm. did some interaction to see does it work. Mm. I want to share with you that the schools need only curriculum interpretation. How do you interpret the curriculum? Okay. But the resources are there. When I went to Bugangari in Rukunjiri, mm. the one teacher there was teaching number bases. Mm. And do you know what the teacher did? No. Just collected the stones of different colors mm. from the river bank and brought for the learners. He didn't have what I saw in mm. Singapore. Mm. In Singapore, Number bases are taught using the straws, mm. which is a modern item. But the teacher there was using stones mm. and told the children to bring different stones, a hundred of them each, to do number bases. Mm. And they were heaping the stones. So you could tell them, collect 30 stones mm. from your pack. So the children get 30, then he says, count in seven is so the child becomes in seven the 30 stones and hips the seven here they are there mm. and this teacher showed me 
that number bases can be taught using the local materials mm. in Ugangari. So that was a very good example. Mm. But when I went to Singapore to benchmark the, on about the same curriculum, the number bases was being taught using the straws. Mm. In physics, the teachers in Singapore, they tell the senior one learner to come with a, a toy car because all the physics is on the toy car. Mm. If it, you want motion, it is there. When you want light, the mirrors are there. When you want electricity, it will be there. Sound, it will make the sound. Everything is on the toy car. Here, we could improvise. Mm. It, you just, because when you go in the rural areas, I was making cars from banana fiber mm. when I was young. So if it is uh, balls, we are making balls from banana fiber. So yeah. With the materials, mm. it is curriculum interpretation. Okay. So the teachers need to be sensitized on how to use the locally available materials. materials. That is one. Two, the curriculum itself that we have rolled out mm. is because it is learner centered. The learner have something in their experience, in their exposure. Mm. The teacher brings the concept. Mm. Like, if I wanted the concept of matrices, mm. every day there is a, you hear you tell us about the football league. Yes. You say now, like in Uganda, we have uh, Express, is it still there? Yeah, Express. <laughs> <laughs> and Vira Joko, yes. they are there. KCCA mm. is there. Then uh, URA. URA. URA is there. Yeah. So you tell us, URA has played so many games, mm. uh, Express played so many girls. Mm. And then how, how many were scored? Or oh, how many games did it win? Mm. How many did it lose? How many did it draw? Then you say, if you win, three points. Mm. If you draw, one point. If you lose, zero points. Mm. We are making matrices. And it is real. <laughs> <laughs> it is a reality. <laughs> it is a, a real reality. Then in physics, mm. or in chemistry, yeah. many of us, the younger people I see in my house, Every morning they put perfume in their armpits. Mm. And uh, if you are in that room and you have not put perfume, even if you are in the corner there, after some time the particles of perfume will reach you. Isn't that diffusion? So <laughs> the, the materials are there. <laughs> the we materials just, we, we are there. We just there. need to understand and incorporate <laughs> that. Incorporate the things okay. that we need. Mm. If I didn't do that, I can just ask, like if you pass via the Luigi Northern Bible. Yes, yes. What do you get in your nose as you are ah, passing there? There is that heavy stench, stench. that fills up your so mind. So is diffusion not taking place? Materials from region of high concentration to region of low concentration. Mm. And it is happening. If somebody is cooking food and it burns and you are so many meters away, mm. you will get the smell and that is diffusion. You don't need that they will need potassium permanganate or copper sulfate <laughs> to do it. It is with us. It is okay. the reality. So it is the interpretation um. that the teachers need to either remind themselves because they were taught at one point in mm. the teacher training colleges and universities. Mm. So they need to remind themselves. So if they unpack this and bring it to our realities, mm. the learners will understand even more. I look at a situation. We, we have added mm. training since 2020. Before mm. we rolled out, mm. there was sensitization. Five teachers were invited from each school okay. to come and get aware mm. and get oriented. Mm. But we have continued to train in mm. 2021, 2022, mm. even this year. We have trained teachers from okay. different schools. Mm. We get a few because of the resource envelope. Mm. They come to represent the many. And when they go back to school, mm. we expect them to go and train those who have remained at school, okay. such that we all come on board. Okay. Yeah. I look at a situation uh, because uh, uh, the other uh, curriculum that nurtured us was now examination centered. He who scored more in the UCE exams gets a first grade and so they are considered to be bright. <laughs> that is it. So even if, even if you have a lot of content and you can interpret it, as long as you do not have a first grade, you don't even be admitted um, to some schools. So you'll go to schools that are considered to be schools of those with low grades. But I look at a situation where 
we still have UNEB in existence. Does it mean that the change, that the setting of exams is also going to change? Uh, or UNEB will still now get back to its uh, or, uh, to its old way of setting exams? Are there templates that uh, teachers are using in schools uh, to prepare learners for these exams just in case they are to happen? Or even those exams are phased out that a learner will now come out with their own skills? Thank you very much for that question. I want to pick the Luganda saying, mm. when the white ants change the eyes, you have to change the collecting point. <laughs> okay. That is, so when the curriculum changed, mm. assessment must definitely change. Okay. So the assessment that we envisage, mm. that we want to see, mm. is a competence-based assessment. Okay. And in competence-based assessment, mm. we started the dose of it mm. by writing the learner's book. And in the learner's book, at the end of each topic, mm. there is an assessment item mm. called activity of integration. This assessment activity also has been put in a teacher's guide. Mm. Like this is agriculture. Mm. Senior one. Senior one. So what, what is this? A teacher's guide? guide yeah. yeah teacher's this is guide. what guides the teacher. Okay. So at the end of the topic one, in mm. senior one, mm. there is an activity of integration mm. that activity of integration mm. informs yeah, week 11 of the term yeah, week 11 activity of integration, integration. Mm. it is an activity which demands the learner to apply what he has learned in the 11 weeks oh. and that is the kind of assessment okay that your neighbor is going to assess okay and i want to inform you mm. They are already in school this week mm -hmm. to pilot mm -hmm. the envisaged assessment. Oh. And uh, in uh, Soroti, they will be there. Soroti, Soroti area, they will be there on Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'm sure of that. Okay. The team of UNEB is there. Mm -hmm. And that activity of integration, some people call it scenario-based question. Mm -hmm. It demands that you apply what the knowledge you have acquired, the skills you have acquired, the understanding that you have acquired, the mm. values mm. to a real life situation. Okay. And when you do that, mm. then we know that you can transfer your learning mm. in real life. Mm. You can apply the knowledge, mm. the facts that you have learned mm. when you are faced with a problem. Okay. So that assessment is in each subject, mm. each topic, so like in agriculture, we have only one topic in a term. So they will do only one assessment. In a term. In a term. Mm. In Sierra, they have only one topic in a term. Mm -hmm. They do only one assessment. But in history, they have three topics. In a term. In a term. So they do three assessments. Okay. So in like in English language, mm. there is a topic called market. Mm. So the learners are given a situation mm. like when uh, you, one time when you went to the market and it was very memorable for you, mm. I went to Nabila Tuk market, for instance. <laughs> it was very, very, in Karamoja. Mm. When I visited that market, if I brought that story, if I visited, when I visited that market, the first thing I was with a team of visitors to Karamoja. Mm. We met the butchermen seated on their meat, mm. carcass. Eh. They, they were seated on it. And if you want to take a piece, you just tell him, I want that piece. He moves off and he cuts ah. and gives you. That. <laughs> so that was very memorable for me. But as you were wondering what is taking place, mm. one of our friends, his money was picked eh. from his pocket. Yeah, because for us, we were so amused. In Nabila took? In Nabila took. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> took the money. <laughs> so it was very, very amusing. And, but at the same time, our friend lost the money. So the task would be, what advice would you give to those oh. who visit markets in Uganda? That is the task. Wow, wow, wow. Aye. So they <laughs> give you a scenario mm. with some perplexing mm. idea, mm. like I've put mm. it mm. at mm. Nabila, what, mm. what was in Nabila too. Mm. But many of you, you have visited markets, yeah. you go to a window, yeah. some people there, you are pulled this way, you are pulled that way. 
Isn't it calling for a situation like uh, what uh, like a story they used to tell us mm. in English paper one that uh, the teacher told this, the learners, mm. imagine, uh, write a composition, imagining you are in a war, mm. and then a learner just slept off. When the teacher asked why they're not writing, they said, I died immediately, the war began. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, this time around, <laughs> we give you a situation, mm. a real life situation, okay. which you have to read. And using your critical thinking skills, because we want to develop critical thinking skills, okay. that the learner has available information. Mm. And when that information is synthesized by you, the learner, mm. you discover the problem. Mm. And when you discover that problem, you can mm. give an advice, okay. like I was saying. Mm. So, because like if you lost your money, mm. what advice? Okay. How do you protect your property when you're in the market? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, lastly, as we draw closer to the, uh, yeah. to the end of this discussion, uh, we look at our primary school curriculum, which is uh, more into teacher-centered somehow, and then a learner comes from primary with this uh, type of curriculum, and then enters into secondary. Se secondary curriculum, which has been modified. And then what is going to happen? Well, because I understand NCDC has embarked on the A-level curriculum also. So yeah, is it that by the time these people uh, are in senior five by 2025, uh, that NCDC will be done with this new curriculum and ready to be introduced? Or they'll now have to get back to this old curriculum as you're still uh, amending the A-level curriculum? We have, as NCDC, we are like a coops. Okay. When people are cooking in the kitchen, mm. you don't ask them, what are you doing? <laughs> you wait for the food. Okay. <laughs> so, NCDC has already embarked on the cooking of yes. the Erevo curriculum, mm. and the, the baseline survey was done. Mm. That is very clear. We did a needs assessment. Mm. What do the community of Uganda say? What do educators say? Mm. We have interacted with stakeholders. Mm. We started with the, the vice chancellors, the academic registrars, and the lecturers. Mm. We have interacted with a number of stakeholders, the employers, the people who graduated from senior six. They have given us views. And as NCDC, we are synthesizing them such mm. that we get a good recipe mm. for everybody. We, we are benchmarking. Mm and seeing what other countries are doing. Mm. So the cooking is going on okay. in the preparation that by 2025, mm. we should be ready mm. if everything is in place. Okay. But uh, as curriculum designers, for us, we are doing our work. Okay. And uh, I want to inform the stakeholders that mm. let them be ready. And uh, this time around, we are using a backward design model. Mm. It says, where are, where are two? Mm. Where are two? What kind of senior six graduate do we need? Mm. That is the question. Mm. And every stakeholder, if you have an idea mm. to tell us which kind of senior six graduate you want, oh. the doors of the director NCDC are open. Mm. Just bring your ideas and we spice up our dish that we are preparing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, what are your parting shots in a minute or less uh, as we wind up this discussion on the beauty and glory in this new lower secondary school curriculum? The beauty is ask your child what he or she can do in real life after interacting with the teacher and her friends or his friends okay. from school. Okay. That is my last word. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mulumba. We are grateful that you gave in this time to come and share with us. I believe you as a parent who has been watching all, even you who is a caretaker, a guardian, who at least has someone who is between senior one and senior three, at least you have something you now know about this curriculum and I believe you can now embrace it. So each time uh, learners I have a little sister who always calls, today we are going for a trip, we are going for this, we are going to see this, and we are like, ah, ah, that is being too much, but at least we now know why we have to put in at least this money, because it is more practical than theoretical. So, thank you so much for watching our Family Hour Monday edition. We shall be back tomorrow, same time, discussing health. But just to remind you that the 13th of August, 
is uh, Church of Uganda Media Day. And when we talk about Church of Uganda Media Day, the, uh, we now talk about Church of Uganda Family TV. This is a day dedicated by the province to pray for us. Pray for Church of Uganda Family TV. Uh, watch Church of Uganda Family TV. Encourage other people to watch Church of Uganda Family TV. But most importantly, you can as well support us financially by advertising with us, but also by supporting us in a way of um, in a way of uh, sowing in us. Thank you so much. God bless you. I remain Adrian Austin Mukalazi.